In the heart of South Carolina, where the air hung heavy with the promise of Southern comfort, I found myself donning the uniform of a busboy at an all-you-can-eat country buffet. Little did I know that the tales of gluttony and peculiar dining habits were about to unfold at a table that would be forever etched in the annals of my memory. Picture a sprawling table occupied by what seemed like a conglomerate of families, a lively group of around 12 individuals, united by the prospect of endless buffet delights. As I approached, the aftermath of their feast lay before me, a chaotic canvas of mashed potatoes, crab legs, and the remnants of a culinary carnival. However, it wasn't the remnants on their plates that set this gathering apart. It was their unique approach to plate reuse that left an indelible mark. Instead of the conventional return of plates to the buffet line, this group had adopted a different strategy. A strategy that involved scraping their plates not onto a designated area, but directly onto the floor beside their chairs. Yes, you read that correctly. The floor, once a pristine expanse of linoleum, was now adorned with miniature mountains of culinary castaways. Each chair had its own distinctive pile, a peculiar blend of chicken bones, crab legs, mashed potatoes, and the echoes of baked potatoes, a mosaic of gluttony, if you will. Navigating the sea of discarded delights, my busboy duties took on a surreal quality. The juxtaposition of the joyous chatter and the peculiar dining decorum created a spectacle that transcended the realm of the ordinary. It was a buffet experience like no other, where the floor bore witness to the remnants of their collective indulgence. As I cleared away the remnants of their feast, I couldn't help but marvel at the eccentricities of that memorable day. Little did I know that this buffet tale would become a narrative I'd share, a story that captures the essence of a peculiar dining escapade in the heart of the South. In the realm of casino buffets, where culinary indulgence meets the thrill of the game, my buddy stepped into an arena where appetite reigned supreme. Now, imagine a man of colossal proportions, tipping the scales at a solid 400 plus olives, ready to take on a buffet that boasted crab legs and steak among its treasures. As the plates stacked high with succulent crab legs reached a count that would make most diners blush, the manager of this fine establishment decided it was time to intervene. Picture this scene, my friend, relentless in his pursuit of gastronomic glory, facing a manager with a proposition. In an unexpected turn of events, the manager offered him a tempting deal, $250 in free slot play to gracefully exit the buffet. This wasn't just a tale of an Epicurean conquest, it was a strategic move by the casino to divert a culinary colossus from depleting their crab leg reserves. The stakes were high and the buffet battlefield witnessed a negotiation that transcended the realm of ordinary dining experiences. But the story doesn't end there. It turns out my buddy wasn't alone in this gastronomic escapade. Two other gentlemen, each tipping the scales at no less than 300 elves, joined him in this culinary odyssey. Together, they formed a trio of hearty appetites, determined to conquer the buffet bounty before them. Piling plate upon plate, my friend and his compatriots left no stone unturned, consuming a metric ton of delectable delights. The buffet, with its $50 per person price tag, was no match for their voracious appetites. They devoured three to four times the worth of a regular patron, with my buddy emerging as the undisputed heavyweight champion, consuming a staggering eight to ten times the buffet's value in food. As the trio indulged in this feast fit for titans, the casino manager's gamble paid off in a different way. The free slot play, a parting gift to my friend, turned into a stroke of luck as he walked away with just over a hundred dollars in winnings. In the world of casinos, where games of chance unfold, my buddy had found a different strategy, beating them at their own game, not on the casino floor, but at the bar and buffet. It was a tale of excess, negotiation, and ultimately, a triumph that left both the buffet and the casino wondering if they had underestimated the power of a true gastronomic mastro. 
In the bustling rhythm of our restaurant, where meals weave stories and transactions complete experiences, there was an incident that unfolded like a subplot in a dramatic tale. A woman, accompanied by her two children, entered our establishment, seeking the comforts of a regular meal. As the culinary journey progressed, it soon became apparent that this ordinary meal was about to take an unexpected twist. In a move that left us baffled, she decided to execute a quick escape with her younger daughter, leaving her underage son stranded at the table. Our keen-eyed staff swiftly caught wind of this peculiar act and decided to play detective. A member of our team embarked on a mission to trace the elusive diner, only to discover her patiently waiting in her car at the parking garage, anticipating her son's arrival. The plot thickened as she adamantly refused to return and settle the bill, plunging the situation into a realm that required intervention. The decision was made to exercise an unconventional method, keeping her son hostage until the arrival of the police to navigate this complex scenario. It was a moment that underscored the lengths some individuals are willing to go, even at the expense of their own children. Yet, this tale didn't merely conclude with an attempted dine and dash escapade. As the layers were peeled back, we unraveled an additional thread of intrigue. It turned out that the woman had a knack for acquiring information, having pilfered one of the manager's keycards. This clandestine keycard operation allowed her unauthorized access to our hotel, where she and her accomplices would clandestinely indulge in the luxury of our top floor pool. While we couldn't help but acknowledge the audacity and cunning of her maneuvers, it was a stark reminder of the diverse stories that unfolded within the walls of our establishment. A seemingly routine dinner transformed into a narrative that showcased the unexpected twists and turns that life, and sometimes a restaurant, has to offer. In the small town rhythm where opportunities for high school and college kids were limited, my family found itself woven into the fabric of a golden coral. Three of us, each stationed in different sections, became part of the bustling narrative that unfolded within those buffet-lined walls. I found my niche in the bakery, a realm surprisingly low on horror stories, save for the occasional aftermath of a horde of ravenous children sweeping through, leaving chaos in their wake. My brother, stationed at the steak station, had his fair share of tales. There emerged a set of regulars with a peculiar taste for the unconventional. They craved blue steaks. The very thought of ordering such a dish from a buffet made my stomach churn, yet this eccentric preference translated into generous tips for my brother. On the flip side, my cousin navigated the realms of the salad bar, a seemingly innocuous territory that harbored its own set of challenges. Management directives occasionally led to culinary practices that raised eyebrows, and at times, stomachs. She found herself in the peculiar position of keeping seafood items on the bar for durations that stretched far beyond their prime. The pinnacle of this endurance was chilled shrimp from Mother's Day that lingered for over a week and a half. The breaking point came when a customer, perturbed by the less than appetizing aroma, voiced their concerns, prompting management to relent and allow the disposal of the lingering seafood. Our collective experiences at Golden Coral wove a tapestry of tales that showcased the quirks and challenges of the buffet world. From blue steaks to resilient seafood, each section held its own unique flavor in the narrative of our time at the beloved, but sometimes perplexing establishment.